Hi, my name is Rick Fassett and I'm a technical marketing engineer in the Tessent product group of Mentor, a Siemens business. This is part three of this video series looking at how the Tessent tools account for the full fault coverage in complex SOC designs. What I want to do in this third part of the series is to demonstrate for you how to use the tool for reporting coverage information when working at the SOC level of a hierarchical design with multiple wrapped cores. First, a brief description of the SOC design we'll be looking at. The full chip net list consists of three wrapped core instances and some top level glue logic. One instance is the processor core shown in the second video of this series. And then there are two instances of a GPS core. In this demonstration though, we won't be working with the full net list. Since we'll be generating X test mode patterns, it will only be necessary to load the SOC level netlist along with the gray box netlists of the wrapped cores. I'll switch over now to a Linux window so I can show you how to generate X test patterns and then merge the in test results from the wrapped cores into a single comprehensive test coverage number for the entire SOC. The first command is this set TSDB output directory. This is the path name to the TSDB for the SOC level, so we can write all our files and results there. The next command I want to highlight is open TSDB, because we're going to be merging information from both the SOC level as well as from cores that have been instantiated in this SOC. We want to be able to point to the TSDB uh, directories for those cores. So what you can see here is the open TSDB command to point to where the processor core is located as well as the GPS baseband core. Next is the redesign command. So in this case we're going to redesign for the chip top so this is the SOC level and we're bringing up the full gate level netlist. We're also going to redesign for the processor core but you can see here there's the dash view gray box so this is telling the tool to go into the TSDB for the processor core and find the gray box netlist which is stored in there. And then also redesign for the GPS baseband. So I've actually already started this ATPG run to generate the X test mode transition fault patterns at the SOC level. Even before generating patterns we add faults dash all and then we can report the statistics. We can see where some of the fault classes have already been pre-classified. For example, under the detected by implication, we have another category we hadn't seen earlier at the core level, and that's B-scan. So this is the boundary scan related faults. As well for ATBG untestable or AU faults, again, we have some faults associated with the IJTAG network. Now this is the IJTAG logic that is at the SOC level as well as OCC. One thing I want to point out here in the statistics report is the fault population. The fault population uh, is you know, 54,104 in terms of the total faults. Uh, irrelevant faults are going to be slightly less than that. Now what this represents is not the entire SOC design including the cores. It is only what we've loaded into the tool up to this point, which consists of the SOC level netlist and then the gray boxes for all the cores. So there's quite a bit of the design that's not loaded at this time. But for X test mode purposes, this is all that we need to load in. Now we'll go ahead and create the patterns for X test mode and report the statistics on those results. And the test coverage looks pretty low, 58.36 for X test mode. But what does that number really mean? How do we know what we're targeting for X test mode faults or the coverage we're actually getting that we care about? Nor do we know what to look at in terms of AU faults, what's ATBG untestable or not. So let me highlight another command that we use to solve this problem. It allows us to merge all the faults from the cores and other test modes in with the X test mode. Read faults, dash module is the processor core, fault type is transition, the mode EDT int transition, so that's the, the scan mode that we're using at the SOC level. And then we're telling the tool dash merge and dash gray box, meaning the processor core that we're calling out, it's a gray box netlist, so that when we read in faults, 
we're going to be reading in a whole bunch of faults that were part of the full processor core netlist. When we read them into this tool, they don't actually exist in this particular netlist. So we're going to separately track those faults, which are referred to as unlisted faults. And when we dash merge, that means we're merging detected and undetected statuses correctly, meaning we never overwrite a detected fault with an ATPG untestable status. So we're going to read faults for both the processor core and the GPS baseband. And because we've pointed to the TSDB directories for each of these cores using the open TSDB command, the tool knows exactly where to find these fault lists. Now that we've merged in the fault list from the cores for their in-test mode operation, we can take a look at the overall coverage for this SOC design. So the total number of faults is 54,104. This is in fact the total fault population that represents the SOC netlist and the gray boxes for the cores. That's why this column of information is called, is referred to as without unlisted faults. Unlisted faults are the faults that are part of the cores, but were not preserved as part of the gray box for those cores. Now that we've read in the faults from in test mode for those cores, we have a significantly higher fault population. So we have 559,356 faults. This is with the unlisted faults. So this actually represents the entire SOC design with the uh, entire fault population of the cores also included. Now what we can see is the transition coverage for the entire design, which includes in-test mode, x-test mode, and all the results for all of the cores is 93.10. And as we did at the core level, you can take a look at these coverage results in Visualizer, all relative to your design hierarchy. So if we analyze fault coverage, we can add in all of our fault categories. This is what is there by default. Here's the AU faults. We can add the detected by implication faults. And just as we did at the core level, you can expand AU faults to identify all the subclass categories to see where those are located, as with the DI faults. And here real quickly, we can see the MBIST related DI faults we can see that those are actually part of the processor core. And over here in the hierarchy browser, you can see that we have three different instances represented by gray boxes. So that is actually telling you that these are gray box netlists for GPS2, GPS1, and processor. And if you click this to expand it, you can see there are really two components of the test coverage information for GPS2. This little icon where we have a white frame and a dark gray center square, this represents the coverage for the faults that are actually unlisted. And then we can see for this other uh, icon where we have a dark gray border and a white square in the center. This represents the instances in the netlist or essentially what's in the gray box netlist that's currently loaded in the, in the design. In summary, the Tess and Shell database simplifies and automates the task of consolidating test coverage information from multiple sources into a single report. It does this by forwarding coverage information for DFT instruments to the ATPG step and merges the test coverage information of multiple cores and multiple test modes. The resulting coverage is achieved with less ATPG effort. It's more accurate because faults that may be ATPG untestable can be counted as detected by implication. 
It includes fault categories broken down into finer detailed subcategories to help with debug. And it consolidates multiple sources of fault coverage information into a single report. Thank you for your attention and for taking the time to watch this video.